were in the Great Depression. Your objective is to describe the Great Depression. Why did it occur and what was life like? How did it affect American lives? In the latter part of the 1920s, Herbert Hoover was president. It was during his administration that the Great Depression occurred. There was no single cause of the Great Depression, just contributors. One of those contributors was the stock market crash of 1929, also referred to as Black Tuesday. So why did the market collapse? Although Hoover was blamed for the crash, it was not caused by him. There was a number of reasons for the collapse. First, the foreign debt and world reparations being paid by Germany. If you'll remember, at the end of World War I, Germany was required to pay reparations. In fact, Germany was blamed for the war. This bankrupted Germany. In fact, they were not able to pay all of their reparations. So, when Germany's economy was bankrupt, it affected other European economies, and it also affected the American economy. Another reason was the reluctance of Americans to allow debt relief to Europe. World War I was fought in Europe, and it was war-torn after World War I, and there was little to no effort to help Europe rebuild, so that damaged their economies. There were high protective tariffs. We have an industry based on exports, so when you export products and other countries can't afford to buy your products, then you don't make any money. It was buying on margin. 30% of the national wealth was based on debt. There was disproportionate gains in the 20s of rich and middle class. Remember, there was an economic boom, but what must come up goes up must come down, as the saying goes. All sectors are not doing well. We have the agricultural sector. In the Midwest, they're in the middle of a drought, which is creating problems for the farmers. Textile mills are not doing well. Railroads are not doing well. The mining industry is not doing well. Let me talk a little bit about the Dust Bowl. During the time of the Great Depression, there is a major drought in the middle part of the country. This is where a lot of the agriculture is occurring. Combined with the drought, there is also poor soil problems, meaning during World War I, these farmers had produced so much that they didn't allow the soil to repair itself. So when you couple the drought with this lack of care for the soil, it created what they called dust winds. These dust winds were so bad that they killed livestock, they killed plants, they killed people, and this goes on for a very long time. Let me show you a quick little film. I'll just show you a few minutes of it, and I will post the link on Canvas, just to give you a sense of what life was like during the Dust Bowl. Tonight on the American Experience, in 1931, the rain stopped, and the dust storms began. If you got desperate. A lot of people got out of the bed, got their children out of the bed, got out and prayed and thought that was it. They thought that was the end of the world. Relentless dust, bringing disease, despair, and death. It was 10 years of living hell. Surviving the Dust Bowl, tonight on The American Experience. 
Major funding for the American experience is provided by the annual financial support of viewers like you. And by the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation to enhance public understanding of the role of technology. The Foundation also supports the Sloan Technology Series, a collection of books chronicling the major technologies of the 20th century. Hello and welcome to the American Experience. I'm David McCullough. The realities were obvious. It was flat, treeless country where you couldn't count on rain and the wind blew all the time. On old maps it had been sensibly labeled the Great American Desert. But steel plows could cut the heavy sod. and With the introduction of a new variety of winter wheat called Turkey Red, the prospects for farming on the southern plains seemed limitless. The rain will follow the plow, it was said in good faith. For a while, there truly seemed no end to the bounty, until the 1930s, the bad time. One rainless baking summer followed another. The winds gathered terrible force, and the powder-dry land just blew away. People saw everything they'd worked for destroyed, fields in ruin, children choking on dust. Desperate farmers, families by the thousands, gave up and moved on, taking to the road. Grapes of wrath will always come to mind. I like to think how nice it's maybe going to be in California, says Ma Joad. Actually, the great majority of farmers, at least three out of four, stayed where they were. They hung on, refusing to give up. And it's their story that follows, told largely by sons and daughters who were there and remember. Much of the nation never fully comprehended. Places like Oklahoma, Texas, Colorado were all so far away. But how many today think of the Dust Bowl as just something that came and went in another time? The wind still blows on the plains, and for all the strides made in holding back erosion, the soil, true wealth, keeps blowing away. In some places, as much as eight tons of soil per acre every year, all carried off by the wind. Black blizzards, they were called. Dark clouds reaching miles into the sky, churning millions of tons of dirt into torrents of destruction. We could see this low cloud bank, it looked like. You could see it all the way across. And we watched that thing, and it got closer. It seemed to kind of grow, you know, it was getting closer. The ends of it would seem to sweep around. And you felt like, you know, you were surrounded. Finally, it would just close in on you, shut off all light, you couldn't see a thing. And it kept getting worse and worse, the wind going harder and harder, and kept getting darker and darker. The old house just vibrating, like it was going to blow away. And I started trying to see my hand. I kept bringing my hand up closer and closer and closer and closer. And I finally touched the end of my nose and still couldn't see my hand. That's how black it was. A lot of people got out of bed, got their children out of the bed, got out praying, and thought that was it. They thought that was the end of the world. Dust storms engulfed whole towns, ensnaring residents in a whirlwind of stinging, blinding dirt. Thousands would get sick from a mysterious illness. Scores would die. When those dust storms blew and you were out in well, you spit out dirt. It looked like tobacco juice, only it was dirt. When I'd see one of these black clouds rolling in, I remember thinking, why is it so dark? Why is it so dirty? What have I done now? What did we do to cause this? So as you can see, it was very devastating to the Midwest, so much so that many would leave. Many would go to California. Some would stay in California, and then others would move back once the drought had ended. The crisis will deepen. Farm prices would fall. Cotton was seven. 15.5 to 4.6 a bale, a ma major drop. The European economic collapse would continue to deepen.
making the depression worse. Over a thousand banks failed in three months. A hundred thousand businesses failed. Severe unemployment, 12 to 14 million. People are losing their homes. People are sleeping on park benches. They are sleeping in tents. They are in shanty towns. As you can see here, these were called Hoovervilles. So there was a great deal of fear and insecurity of the capitalist system. The American dream was threatened. This will result in psychological depression as well. Americans blame themselves, particularly men. Men who were unemployed felt responsible for their family. They were the breadwinners. Some of them would get depressed. Some of them would get so depressed that they would simply abandon their families. Or they would get depressed because their wives and daughters had to go out and find work to help support them. There was violence on the streets because people were scared. People turned to charities for help. They went to soup kitchens, bread lines, This is a very iconic photo of really the devastation that the Great Depression caused. The youth are affected. Children were separated from their families. They became drifters. Oftentimes they were separated from their families because they were out looking for work to help support themselves and their families. So what does Hoover do to address this issue? He addressed the Great Depression as he would a business problem. Hoover was a Republican and he was a businessman. He believed that competition in, in individuals was needed. Personal responsibility was needed. That government was not the answer. That government intervention was not the way to go. That government should not provide relief to the unemployed. That private industries and charitable industries should step in to help those who are suffering. He relied particularly on charities for the soup kitchens and the bread lines. He felt that businesses should offer jobs. In fact, he will provide a tax cut to businesses thinking that would help businesses create jobs and get people employed again so they could feed their family and end their suffering. What he was talking about here is the trickle-down theory. The trickle-down theory is this idea if you give tax cuts to businesses, they will use their savings from the tax cuts to put back into the business to hire more employees. He initiated some public projects. He will create what's called the Reconstruction Finance Corporation, giving $500 million to grant loans to banks for mortgages. But in the end, Hoover's methods was too little for this massive Great Depression. It was just too deep. He believed that 
that the depression would simply correct itself, like it had in the past. We've had economic depressions in the past, and they eventually correct themselves. But this had gone on so long, and it was so deep, uh, that his methods really didn't help very much. There's one incident that I want to mention that happens during the Great Depression, and it was the Bonus Army incident. And this was a gathering of a, a number of former World War I veterans who in the mid-1920s were promised bonuses for their services. But those bonuses wouldn't be paid out for a number of years. Not until, I believe, it was the 1940s. But because they were so poor and devastated by the Great Depression, they wanted the government to pay out those bonuses immediately, that they needed that money to support themselves. And they will actually march on Washington. They will show up at the White House. But in response to that, Hoover will send out troops and have them gassed, which was a major optics mistake for Hoover. And it will be his demise because Hoover will lose the presidency to FDR. But that concludes this lecture. As always, let me know if you have any questions.